So I will be briefly talking about the history of um, dynamic modeling in psychology because that's actually what my background is in. So I think one of the great things about structural equation modeling is you have your observed data and then you can tease it apart and you get latent variables that you cannot observe directly, but they're there and you can find them. And I, that was something that just was really amazing to me. And I also, I just like the formulas. I really like formulas. So. I actually did my, um, my master's in Utrecht and at the time they didn't have a special research master in methods and statistics. We do now, but we didn't have it at the time. And also, um, when I had to choose a specialization, I was still under the impression that I wanted to be a therapist. So that's why I started uh, doing uh, uh, my master's in clinical uh, psychology. But once I was doing it, I started to see that, yeah, I was not really fit to be a, a therapist. So I already decided I wanted to do research back then. And again, they're decomposed into a between-person part, so a mean for each person, and a within-person part. So my relationship with M Plus is that I collaborate with them. Uh, I've been collaborating with them now for a year and a half, working on the development and implementation of dynamic structural equation modeling, which is a new toolbox in M Plus which allows you to analyze intensive longitudinal data, so time series data of one person or of multiple individuals. And uh, they approached me because of the papers they had read and also a presentation they had seen at an earlier meeting of the M plus uh, users meeting. And um, uh, they asked me if I was willing to help them out uh, with uh, advising them of what to do and uh, which features to develop and, and what uh, directions to go. And for me, this was great because I realized, you know, uh, if it's going to be implemented in M+, then it's going to be so much easier for people to use. And before, it was very difficult uh, to run these models. You really needed to use specialized software, and, and specifying those models would not be easy for someone from clinical psychology. So. Oh, wow, look at that. So one of the things that I'm very excited about are the regime switching models that are sort of there, but they are not in the released version yet. So that's definitely something that I would be interested in because I think many processes, psychological processes, are characterized by regime switches. And another thing that I really want is uh, some sort of fit measure. So that is definitely something that we will be working on uh, to see like how can we evaluate the models. Now we can estimate them, but we also have to be able to evaluate how good they are and to be able to compare them to each other. Uh, hopefully a lot of people will start to use the program and, um, and based on their experiences, we will also see what new kind of developments are needed to improve uh, the, the things that we can do.